why are we here today? Several industry statistics point to opportunities to improve the cost, speed, and risk profiles of studies. Studies have shown on average 22% of procedures in phase two and three trials were found to support non-core objectives as well as endpoints. And some, uh, some of these, if not many of these procedures actually can be eliminated. Another study has shown 37% of sites do not meet their enrollment targets and 11% of sites do not enroll a single subject at all. Lastly, 18% of all amendments are completely avoidable and this is important because each amendment costs approximately $450,000 and requires 61 days to implement on average. Jason will be discussing why these points are important and how they can be addressed. The design of a study protocol impacts all other downstream operations. And with the rising complexity of protocol design, that impact is increasingly tangible. These are the areas that you'll be hearing more about today and how they're affected by study design. It includes amendments, site and patient burden, site duration, among other things. All these factors are directly tied to the speed, cost, and risk profiles of your studies. In line with the previous slide, these are the common challenges that we are seeing from our customers. Overall, the need to reduce cost, reduce that site and patient burden, and speed time to market are typically among the most important to address amongst our customers and folks that we speak with. Today, Jason's going to discuss a proper focus on study design will allow you to enhance the speed of your studies and potentially your time to market, lower the cost of your studies, and reduce the overall operational risk associated with the conduct of your studies. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jason. All right, Brian, thank you, and thanks everyone for attending today. Um, you know, as Brian mentioned, there, there is a current state in the market today, right? And I think it's important that we recognize the current state and where things sit um, today. You know, if we look back at the growth in total overall R&D spending, you know, over the last 20 years, it's grown by about $100 million. So it's going up drastically, and we're really not seeing the return on this investment that we had in the past. You know, we look at the duration of the development of drugs, and for a period of time in the mid-'90s, we've seen a, an increase, I mean, I'm sorry, we've seen a greater efficiency and a decrease in the duration from the time we would go from IND approval to an NDA approval. And part of that was, you know, occurred based on the amount of clinical time that was involved, as well as a enhancement in the regulatory process to get through. But over the last 10 years or so, we've seen this increase again. So now, you know, we're looking at approximately close to 10 years again for the duration from um, IND to NDA approval. You know, so why why is this actually happening? What's causing this increase to go this increase again to occur? You know, if we look at some of the information that comes from the Tufts Center for the Study of Drug Development on the um, on on some of the factors that are affecting this this increase in time or increase in the duration of the clinical research, you know, we look at things like screen to completion rates. So over over a ten year period we've seen about 56 percent, um, I'm sorry, in 2012 we've seen 56 percent of patients that are screened into a study completed. And as a result, we've seen almost a 100 percent increase in the amount of time required to enroll patients to achieve the targets. So what are the issues that are affecting this, this balance between efficiency and performance performance in the study? Well, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a balance, and we at Medidata believe it, it's coming up with the proper balance between the business requirements and the science requirements. It's, it's understanding, you know, yes, we're going, doing good science, and yes, we understand why we're doing particular things, but understanding the impact of adding particular endpoints to your study or particular um, outcomes. And as we do this, you know, what's happening is we're, in, we're, we're increasing the burden on the, on, the, on the patient and on the sites by having an ever-growing design complexity. 
So, so what's at this? What's causing this? What's driving this up? Right? Why, we see this happening, but you know, as we go through this process, we recognize that we're adding different pieces in for different reasons. But you know, over a 10-year period, we see the number of endpoints almost doubling in a pivotal phase three study. The number of procedures going up drastically. The number of eligibility criteria going up drastically. You know, I can understand that this increase in the number of countries, right, in the number of sites required to get the patients, because we've seen actually a much slower enrollment rate due to the increased complexity of the study. We also see, you know, the total number of randomized patients actually has gone down. And the number of, uh, of case report forms used to collect the data in these studies has gone up.